Am I the a-hole for confronting someone I bullied about their passive-aggressive post about me when I have tried to make amends? I-29 female was a bully in high school. I'm not proud of it, but I'm not going to downplay or try to justify it or anything. But I grew up, learned from my mistakes, and did repeat them. One of my targets was Ruby, 28 female. We ran in the same circle until high school when I made friends with some people in a different group. You could say they were the popular kids. Ruby being so obviously on the spectrum made her easy to torment. We also took advantage of how badly she wanted to be popular. Towards the end of high school, she started to stand up for herself more. In college, I grew up and figured I would try to extend an olive branch. I started off by sending friend requests on social media, which were denied. I did, however, notice that she accepted my follow request on Instagram but didn't follow me back. I mention this because she regularly shares autism awareness and anti-bullying content. I got the message and left her alone. I wasn't going to waste her or my time with an apology that wouldn't be accepted anyway. Several years ago, our old group had a reunion and tried to talk to her there, but was met with short and curt replies and death stares. Later, I saw she posted pictures specifically without me in them and if I was in them, I was cropped out. I messaged the group chats we made to coordinate this meetup. Wow, real mature Ruby. Which wasn't acknowledged. Recently, Ruby was in our hometown. She posted pictures with people we went to school with, which had passive-aggressive captions about how they overcame bullying together and stayed together. At one point, she even posted a story with a caption, Screw you, OP. You will never stop me from living my best life. Again, I haven't interacted with her in many years by this point, or tormented anyone at all. The kicker, though, she posted pictures with a couple of the guys from my old group with a caption about how nice it is when people grow and change. I about had it at this point. I DM'd her about how she clearly forgives male bullies who said worse things than I ever did, but always snubs me when I have genuine remorse and didn't want to sleep with her. I also let her know that some people in the group still made fun of her when reminiscing, but she won't forgive the person who doesn't partake. Once again, no direct communication. Just another passive-aggressive post with a screenshot of the message and a caption about how I clearly haven't changed, daring out all the trauma I inflicted on her. Then other people from high school began to comment on that post about their own experiences with me. Some even started to DM me and call me out on behavior from over a decade ago, when I haven't repeated. Am I really an a-hole for calling out hypocrisy like I see it? Like, yeah, she can choose who she forgives. But I can honestly say that others in the group treated Ruby much worse than I ever did. I actually am sorry, and this is the one time I expressed any annoyance at this whole situation. Now for the top comments. I didn't even read anywhere you gave a legit apology. You're the a-hole. Exactly. Opie never said sorry. She sent a friend request which was denied. You can send people messages without being their friend. It just lands in the other folder or she could ask a mutual friend to forward her the written apology. She had options to message and apologize. And she didn't take it. Opie, you never owned up to your mistakes. You are the a-hole. And still a bully. And then gave up because it was never accepted. She couldn't even put in the effort for her non-apology for tormenting the woman. And that assumes all anti-bullying messages are passive-aggressive towards her. Maybe Ruby is just an activist, or has kids or younger relatives who might be harassed for the same condition she has. But of course, Opie's passive-aggressive remark of, wow, real mature, is totally fine and dandy. Opie should just leave her alone. You're the a-hole. You tormented this girl and you admit it. She's made it clear she wants nothing to do with you. Grow up and leave her alone. Opie didn't apologize. As far as Ruby knew at first, Opie was trying to pretend they were good and nothing happened. Ruby tried to make her point over and over that being treated like that hurt and had an impact, and from Ruby's point of view that Opie was ignoring. Then Ruby made a point that she's not acknowledging Opie, to which Opie told her, real mature. Opie never apologized, and each interaction behaved worse and worse. And as far as Ruby knows and can see, Opie has continued her old habits and intimidation tactics. She sent friend requests on social media. That is totally an apology. Jeez, what more do you want? Opie bullied this poor girl in high school and has decided the way to make amends is to harass her? She posted pictures with a couple of the guys from my old group with a caption about how nice it is when people grow and change. 
Maybe they actually did genuinely apologize and change, unlike OP. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my cousin and his wife? It serves them right that their daughter wants nothing to do with them? My cousin Mark and his wife Patricia have two children, Jennifer and Lexi. School was very difficult for Jennifer. She had many problems with boys, and a traditional school environment just didn't accommodate her learning style. Lexi performed very well in that environment. Lexi was able to skip a grade in elementary school and was considered a violent prodigy. Instead of trying to help Jennifer with her learning struggles or encourage Jennifer's talent, Mark and Patricia would negatively compare her to Lexi. Things like, Lexi has twice as many friends as you, and she's four years younger. Or, Lexi skipped a grade and has all A's, yet you're only getting a C in English. Or, Lexi can do things that are actually useful. Mark and Patricia would talk about raising Jennifer and Lexi by saying, the screw-up always comes before you do something great. I would stand up for Jennifer, because Mark and Patricia were clearly hurting her with such incredibly cruel statements. Mark and Patricia would only respond that we were both being oversensitive, and how their comments were good because they would motivate Jennifer to be as ambitious and advanced as her younger sister. Jennifer and Lexi are now adults. Jennifer moved out as soon as she financially could and has had no contact with Mark or Patricia since. Lexi fell into bad habits when she entered college and eventually dropped out of the university. She no longer plays violin, also flips off and curses at her parents. She essentially told Mark and Patricia, screw you, it's my life and I'm doing whatever the heck I want with it. Because Lexi is no longer fulfilling their expectations or doing things they can boast about, Mark and Patricia are now trying to get back into contact with Jennifer. But Jennifer wants nothing to do with them. Mark and Patricia were complaining because after using a fourth phone number to contact Jennifer, she had just blocked them previously. Jennifer called them out for only contacting her because Lexi was no longer available. Mark and Patricia tried to get sympathy by saying they have no idea why Jennifer has abandoned them. But I told Mark and Patricia it serves them right that Jennifer wants nothing to do with them. They always made her feel invalued compared to Lexi. Of course, Jennifer doesn't want to be their golden child now that Lexi has lost their favor. Most of the younger family members agree with what I said, excluding Jennifer. Because Mark and Patricia would have likely never contacted Jennifer if Lexi was still doing what they wanted. But most of the older family members said I was an a-hole because Mark and Patricia are realizing their mistake and I'm just kicking them when they're already down. Even if Mark and Patricia were truly sorry for raising Jennifer as if she were less than Lexi, it doesn't excuse them from the consequences of doing it. But the older family members are saying it wasn't a time or place to say what I did. Am I the a-hole? Thank you for standing up for Jennifer. You have the right attitude. And it's not your fault they don't want to be confronted with her gross behavior. Too bad. So sad. Not the whole. Having someone stand up for you and your parents won't can make a huge difference for a kid. 100% this and not the a-hole. Where were the older family members when your cousin and wife were kicking Jennifer when she was down? I'm with Jennifer and you. You were wonderful to stand up for her when no one else would. To your cousin and wife, you reap what you sow. They are the a-holes. Not the a-hole. Pretty typical golden child scapegoat dynamic. I live this too, and I wish I'd had somebody like you speaking truth to my parents. You're not kicking them when they're down, because they're still saying garbage like this. Mark and Patricia tried to get sympathy by saying they have no idea why Jennifer has abandoned them. As long as they pretend to not understand and practice the missing, missing reasons, somebody needs to tell them what's what. I'm glad Jennifer has you to do so on her behalf since nobody else seems to care about her needs in all of this. Who abandoned who in this situation? The parents had abandoned any love or respect for Jennifer, long before she cut them out of her life. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Throw the entire family away, especially Mark and Patricia. That's being horrible parents that play favorites. Jennifer is 10,000% justified in cutting them off. And quite honestly, I hope she freaking crushes everything she pursues in life out of mere spite. It's ironic because Jennifer's talents, which Mark and Patricia called useless and a waste of time, are causing her to thrive right now. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my mother trade my car in that I let her borrow? A year ago, I was in the market for a new car. I had done a project at work really well and received a large bonus. With it, 
I wanted to buy a car. I had my eye on an Infiniti, but it was a little out of my price range. However, with a trade-in and bonus, I could afford it. Around that same time, my mother-in-law was having car trouble and found out I was in the market for a new car. With typical begging, she asked me if she could have my car since I was going to buy a new one. Now, I don't have the best relationship with her. She has hated me since I got married, but we tolerate each other for my partner's sake. She is a narcissist and believes my partner and I should be nothing more than her personal ATM. So, I was against it, but I let her borrow the car. The keyword is borrow. I gave her no title nor permanent rights to the car. Fast forward to a year later, maintenance is needed on a car. She always claims poverty when she wants something and somehow expected my partner and I to foot the bill. When we said no, she wanted us to co-sign a loan for the maintenance. And once again, the answer was no. Fast forward a few weeks and we don't hear from her. The next thing we know, she pulls up in a new car. I had an eerie feeling, but proceeded to ask how she got it. She replied, I traded in my old car. What? You traded in the car I let you borrow and got a newer car than I got. Because I let you borrow my car I planned to trade in? I was livid, but I went numb. I could barely keep it together. When I asked her how she could do this, she said the car was hers and she could do what she wanted. Are you kidding me? I was beyond angry. A few days later, I got a call from the dealership asking me for the title. Apparently, my mother-in-law had lied and told them she had permission to trade a car in and could get the title. Cars can be traded in if there is no loan or lien on it, and since mine was paid, they let her trade it in. Now they are trying to sell the car and need a title for it. I refused and wanted them to either compensate for the value or at least give me a percentage of its value. I didn't want to be unreasonable and take my mother-in-law's car away, but I wanted some kind of value on the $12,000 my car was still worth. They said they were unwilling to negotiate the $5,000 I wanted, but either I could give them the title or that my mother-in-law could return the car she got and pick up the one she traded in. She is beyond angry and thinks I'm being a jerk for not giving her my car. Am I the a-hole for not just rolling over and giving in? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I tell the dealer you are calling the police unless they return it to you. They 100% knew your name was on a title when they look it up. There is no way they thought mother-in-law owned a vehicle and her name was on it. They should have contacted you for the trade because you are the owner. A simple search with a VIN number would show mother-in-law is not the owner. I would give them till the end of business day. I think the dealership royally screwed up here. They should have searched the title before doing the trade-in. They failed big time. 100% report the car stolen, report to the police where it is, and let the police go collect it. Dealership has zero proof that you allowed this trade-in. They never should have taken possession without the title in hand. They screwed up and they need to fix it. And the dealer also needs to deal with your mother-in-law. If I were you, I'd get my car back and go straight to CarMax and sell it immediately. End of story. Info. What does partner have to say about all of this? After all, it is their mother. My partner is beyond angry and has cut contact. They are even more upset than me because of the pattern of behavior over the years. Mother-in-law has always been a thief and justifies it by saying the people she takes from have more. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my son he doesn't need one of his nannies? My son has seven kids. 15 female, 10 male, 8 male, 6 female, 5 female, 3 female, and 6 months male. My son and daughter-in-law have three nannies. Maria and Sarah works weekdays, while Louisa works weekends. My son works a lot, but my daughter-in-law works part-time and is usually home by one. Some backstory. Maria and I do not get along at all. When I'd visit the kids, I'd bring the younger kids a present and take them to the park or zoo. She always picked a fight with me for not doing the same with his oldest, even though she's a teenager and doesn't need someone to bring her a Barbie and take her to the park. I've also not been able to see or talk to my grandkids since before my grandson was born because of a lie that Maria told to my son. My son's oldest daughter is very sick. She takes a lot of medicines. And I talked to her once about living a more natural lifestyle so she could eventually get off off her meds. Maria told my son I tried to convince his oldest to stop taking her medicine. Son also has the option to work from home. He usually chooses to work from the office, but Maria needed two days off so he stayed home with the oldest and the youngest. Maria works mornings and Sarah works afternoons. 
He and I were supposed to go out for lunch that day, so he called to cancel and explained why. At the end of the day, I asked him how his day with the kids was, and he said it was good, and it wasn't as hard as he thought. I asked why he asked Maria if he could work from home and take care of his kids himself, but he got mad at me for trashing Maria. I've told him I think Maria's paid too much for very little work, and he knows she and I don't get along, but I'm not trashing her. I'm just saying he doesn't need her and can save a lot of money. Now he's saying he doesn't want to talk to me if I only want to criticize his family. They consider Maria family since she's been with them for nine years. Am I the a-hole for telling my son he doesn't need Maria? So you tried to convince your sick granddaughter to take on some natural cure scam as opposed to actual evidence-based medicine. Maria told her father exactly what you actually did. You routinely play favorites among your grandkids and pick fights with someone who seems to be doing her job. Yeah, you're the a-hole. Agreed, you're the a-hole. I literally hate people who think medication is equal to unhealthy, and they have to get people off of medication as fast as possible. They praise a natural, healthy lifestyle, while forgetting that the medication is there to help sick people. Medication is liberation from sickness and helps people live. Agreed. I had a relative attempt to convince my mother to stop taking her MS medication because she doesn't like daily shots. I mean, who does? She instead suggested some sort of berry gummy and essential oils. For MS. I do agree that if someone is taking a lot of meds to consult with a doctor and see if anything has changed, and perhaps lessening or changing the plan, as sometimes things are prescribed to cover side effects of others. We did this for my grandmother who went from 7 to 2 pills a day, because there was an alternative to one of her meds, which knocked out 5 others. You're the a-hole. First of all, mind your own business. Also, you really expect someone to work from home and take care of 7 kids? You must be daft. Exactly. If he worked from home, he wouldn't get any work done. And he would likely no longer be employed. 